It is indeed time for questions to the Minister for Culture, Arts and Leisure, and we will start with listed questions. Can I inform members that question 14, should we get to it, has been withdrawn? And I call Mr. Sidney Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Question number one, uh, Deputy Speaker. Minister. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker, and I thank the member for his question. The executive endorsed an investment of around £36 million for sub regional stadia development for soccer as a priority in the next CSR, and a resource budget of around 600000 has been allocated by DFP in February this year to allow my department to start the developments for this programme. A strategic, business, a strategic outline case has been developed and this was submitted to DFP for uh, approval this February. My department has been developing the programme and has worked closely with the IFA to ensure that the programme is aligned to the IFA facility strategy, also ensuring the executives and DECAL's priorities have been fully incorporated into this programme. Programme specific details in terms of eligibility criteria, funding strands, funding limits are currently being finalised and plans for formal consultation with key stakeholders are underway. Mr Anderson for a supplement. Uh, thank you and I thank the Minister for her response. Minister, can I ask you uh, if clubs uh, are being given all the necessary information to assist them to make their applications and also who will administer this fund, the number of clubs likely to benefit and will the funding be spread across the province? Uh, I thank the member um, again for a supplementary question. Uh, first of all, the, as I said in my primary answer to him, I mean the, the terms of reference for this are, and the consultations currently been uh, developed within my department. But certainly, clubs um, who are interested in the plan uh, for sub-regional facilities will uh, will know of the workshops that will be planned uh, as part of the IFA's role and consultation rollout. Uh, they will get all the information they need in order to make a decision, in order to help them ship up an application. Uh, it's also important that if the member has any particular clubs in mind, that he should contact the IFA as part of that consultation to ensure that they are given all the clubs' the information they need. As much information as possible for clubs to commit themselves to an application in advance of that being considered is really important. Uh, but it's really, it also is important to hopefully assure the member that once that process has happened, the yeah, IFA will be making recommendations, but at the end of the day, the decision is mine on which clubs receive the funding as part of that programme. Ms. Michaela Boyle. Uh, Ken Colia, uh, can I ask the Minister to expand on her response and, and uh, give further clarity on who is responsible for the sub regional programme and what form will any public consultation uh, on this programme take? Gormaga. Well, I thank the member for her supplementary. I mean, primarily DECAL is responsible for the development of the sub-regional programme for soccer and certainly additional facilities for the other two of the three big sports thereafter. Uh, and in relation to consultation, um, it is, as I said to um, Mr Anderson, it is important that all the clubs have as much information as possible. And I'm confident that the IFA will rule out a very robust consultation process, which will probably last around 12 weeks, in order to ensure the clubs right across the north um, have an option to get as much information as they need uh, before submitting their application. Call Mr. Chris Little. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, can I, I welcome the much needed funding for football stadia facilities across uh, Northern Ireland? Can I ask the Minister, could she give us a bit more detail around the likely timeline for allocation of that funding? Well, I'm sure the member heard, and maybe didn't, the primary response to Mr. Anderson. I, I mean, initially, this uh, sub region was not due to kick in until the next CSR, which I suppose, without the added year under the mandate, would have actually meant this year. Um, but you know, not waiting on that, I've already put money into a specialist within DECAL to continue the work in the sub-regional from the, the, the stadia programme. The business case, the outline business case has been with DFP. I would imagine that will be approved sometime in the summer, although it's freezing in here, you wouldn't imagine the summer has started. Um, and, and hopefully when we come out of the summer recess and go in, then we're looking at the consultation process which will last 12 weeks. I imagine, certainly before the end of the year, applications will be submitted and we'll be considering them 
because uh, it is substantial money. It's £36 million to be distributed throughout soccer clubs in the north. Call Mr Roy Beggs. Th thank you, Deputy Speaker. Just in terms of the timing, uh, the Minister has alluded to the, the, the process of, of determining who, who would be su successful, but can she also indicate when the actual funding will be available and when it must be delivered by in order that it doesn't drag out and drag out? And would she also indicate any other limitations or constraints on this funding so that any urgent issues such as health and safety situations and uh, improvements that are essential can be made to benefit the junior game? Well, first of all, um, I mean, two of the criteria certainly would need to be uh, around planning permission and certainly security of tenure. It's important, and for, for groups who, and clubs in particular who are applying, that they need to have a long lead-in period in order to, particularly around planning permission, if they're going to look at developing facilities outside of the footprint of what they currently have. So that in itself will take time, and we need to work with and support clubs through that process. Um, and I'm happy to do that. Uh, I mean, this, the sub-regional programme was really going into the next mandate to be spent across the next mandate uh, well in advance of the, the end of that mandate. So it is important, first of all, the clubs get the information that they need. They also get the support they need to make an application. They need to make an application on the basis that um, if they are successful, they will need a further lead-in period to s seek security at tenure if they haven't already got it as well as plan permission in order to spend substantial capital monies. Call Ms Claire Sugden for a question. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. Question number two. And with the Deputy Speaker's permission, I'd like to group questions two and six. Um, and I thank the member for her question. Um, on the 18th of May of this year, Sport and I announced plans to invest £17.5 million of lottery funding into sports facilities projects across the north over the next five years. This will result in significant investment in sport and leisure infrastructure and will help to increase partic participation in sport and physical activity across the communities. This programme will be delivered through three strands, namely a single facility strand, a multi-facility strand and a performance facility strand. Sport and I has indicated that £8.75 million, which is half of the total, will be allocated to single and multi-facility strands, which will benefit sports clubs and communities. This investment will also contribute to DECAL's priorities, such as targeting social need and tackling deprivation through sport by providing improved sporting and leisure access across our communities, including to those who are unrepresented groups, such as females, older women, and certainly people with disabilities. Ms. Sugden for supplement. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her response. Um, can I ask the Minister um, what uh, influence local authorities will have in distributing this money to ensure that it's distributed where it's needed? Well, local authorities, I understand, have been in discussions with Sport and I for some time, um, and certainly most of the local authorities, if not all by this stage, particularly before they amalgamated into the Super Councils, should have prepared a facilities management plan for their council area based on their facilities management plan which is based on need and clearly identified need they were uh, entering into discussions about the potential and possibilities of any mergers in the future uh, i understand that those discussions are still ongoing and certainly um, with the facilities management plans and certainly with the identified need being detailed right across the north it's actually better to get the spent where it's needed and where it can be spent quickly and have a benefit of the community. I'm sure the member will agree with that. Well, Mr. George Robinson. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, could the minister uh, outline how she intends to ensure that the money will be equally distributed in all areas of Northern Ireland? Well, certainly in response to Ms. Sugden, I'm sure the member heard, and particularly coming from the, the same constituency, and certainly will have seen the investment that went into Coleraine. What we need to ensure is that the local government, along with Sport NI, worked collectively and potentially any other sources of funding to have many needs addressed throughout the community, but primarily and particularly around making sure that access and participation is key and access and participation for all. It's not just for soccer clubs or GA clubs or rugby alone, while they take up a big percentage of sport here 
on this part of the island, but certainly for many other sports as possible, and even for people who just want to use it in terms of enhancing physical activity through walking clubs as well. Well, Mr. Fran McCann. I'll ask uh, Kion Kulia. Uh, could I ask the Minister if she could uh, tell us how DECAL will promote greater participation in sport and physical activity to, for older people, young, wom young women and people with disabilities? I thank the member for supplementary. Um, and as I said, I'm sure he, I know he's been listening, but certainly in working with district councils, act, the Active Communities Programme, and even with Sport and I, all work closely together, along with a number of the sporting organisations and the sporting bodies, and that's important. And some of these bodies include Special Olympics and the Disability Sport NI Disability Five Star Challenge. So it is important not only do we work with all the government bodies, but even certainly within the three big sporting bodies. There have been in recent years some very good examples of where they're working together, particularly to look at um, older, more seasoned athletes or people who used to play and have maybe let it let it pass for other activities. Certainly women has been a gap and all people uh, with disabilities need to be um, certainly included in, in, in these proposals as well. So it is important that we look at where the gaps are and do our best to try and meet those gaps. Well, Ms. Karen McKevitt. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister, has it been determined um, on what percentage of the overall fund will be awarded uh, to each of the three strands, uh, the single facility, the um, multi-facility and the performance facility? Yes, there certainly has, there has been um, money set aside for each of the strands. For example, the single facility strand has a budget of approximately around £2 million, and that's primarily aimed at increasing participation in sport within community and club structures, and that can range anything from 10000 to 100000 but I'll, I'll definitely get all the details. The multi-facility strand has a budget of almost £7 million, and these awards are anything from 100 million, sorry, 100,000 to 1 million. And then the performance, which has a budget of almost 9 million. Though while there are no limits on that, certainly it will be for fairly big capital programs. And I think you know, it will be done on the basis of the assessment of that, that capital project overall. Um, and that is something to be welcomed because certainly when some of the local government and sporting bodies were talking about coming together to start, there were always kind of shy of a few hundred thousand pounds, but actually made the programme and the, the project unviable. Now this is an opportunity to try and bridge that as well. Well, Mr Gary Middleton for a question. Uh, thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Question number three. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And I understand questions three and four have also been grouped as well. And I thank the members for their questions. Unfortunately, there is a shortfall in my department's capital budget for 2015-16, which means that it must be restricted to meeting the contractually committed expenditure only. Um, the earliest my department can consider capital allocations beyond contractual commitments will be after the outcome of the June monitoring round is known. Musical instruments for a band scheme is therefore on hold, and I will be submitting a bid to the June monitoring round. For example, um, and, uh, sorry, and in addition, the ongoing promotion, um, certainly in terms of some of the competitions around pipe band contests and solo competitions, uh, the All Ireland FLA, uh, as an example, um, have been examples that I, that, I, that I have used in order to try and bring additional money in. Um, so, uh, music, in terms of culture, the, cult, the role of culture has to play here, and certainly in terms of musical bands, uh, marching bands tradition. Uh, I'm still very supportive, but given the situation that my department's in financially, it is something that I hope to, that hope will change in the near, not too distant future. Well, Mr. Middle, the first supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for her answer. Uh, following a study recently undertaken by DSD outlining the significant uh, benefits that bands have on the local economy here in Northern Ireland, would the Minister agree that such funding is value for money, and will she ensure that, it, that this is a priority uh, as the outcome of the, the June monitoring round? Well, certainly, I mean, the study isn't recent. The study is a few years old, but I suppose it's something that um, the Department can rely on if it so wishes. And it did point up the amount of money that was invested, particularly around the 12th. What it, well, the gaps in the study, and I'd be loath to use it, the gaps didn't point up the amount of money that potentially is lost. 
However, I do value the role that marching bands have to play. So I, I wish to separate the marching bands from that study. The member doesn't mind. I don't think the study leans itself to the, the cause of the marching bands. Uh, but certainly I'd hope to make a very strong, robust, robust bid, which I have for doing, and I hope that's met. Well, Mr. Sammy Douglas for a supplementary. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Deputy Speaker, and could I thank the Minister for her answers thus far. Uh, could the Minister maybe outline what sort of funding has come from the Arts Council for Northern Ireland for under the Musical Instruments for Band Scheme? Well, certainly in recent years, it's well over half a million. In fact, it's probably well over 700,000 uh, so far. And given the demand and the need for marching bands from all traditions right across the north, there certainly is uh, a demand for that funding pot to be increased. Um, I mean, the dream monitoring right, will have bridge a small gap, but I think fundamentally we need to look at not just the role that marching bands, but music have. And even for young people, and maybe not so young people, of our age, some might, that to maybe want to pick up a musical instrument and get back into it, who just want to get involved in jazz or traditional music or other forms of music, I think we need to look at the long term here, acknowledging the roles and the importance of marching bands in the, in the community, but there are other forms of music that are they're also demanding pots of money as well. Call Mrs. Dolores Kelly for supplement. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Minister, uh, given uh, various departments' responsibility for the promotion of good relations, I wonder had you or any of your officials given any consideration of hadn having additional criteria for the grant aid for musical instruments to bands uh, so that they then have to uh, have, show respect for other communities in, in the usage of? Well, I appreciate the member's question because it is something that comes up usually either before the summer recess or directly afterwards. Um, I think it's important, and firstly, let me assure the member, because uh, it has been raised in this House at least several occasions, any band who is in receipt of funding from the Arts Council, as an example, and who, who has broken the law and who may be subject to criminal proceedings, um, will not uh, be a recipient of grant-dated funding, and that is where I clearly laid out in the Arts Council's criteria. There's only been one band who, who uh, that applies to. Uh, who have not applied for funding this year, but it is important that they all sign up to, and not just sign up to, demonstrate uh, good uh, relations, mutual respect, and certainly um, that is part of cultural diversity that we all aim and claim to be part of. We need to see what that actually looks like. Well, Mr. Stephen Mutry for a question. Question number five, Deputy Speaker. Thank the member for his question. Um, DECAL provides funding for festivals and it is di distributed through the Community Festivals Fund. The fund, as a member is aware, is, is, is administered by local councils, which also provide match funding, set criteria and make individual funding decisions. I am advised by Armagh, Banbridge and Craigavon Borough Council that Scarva and District Cultural Society has been awarded fund funding for the Royal 13th event in 2015 through the Community Festivals Fund. And in addition, the Ulster Scots Agency has been approached by the organisers and a meeting has been held shortly with a view to the agency providing some entertainment at the event. Mutri for supplementary. Thank you, and I thank the Minister for her response uh, to date. Given that the 13th of July in Scarva is one of the largest one-day cultural events in Northern Ireland, attracting some 100,000 visitors annually, does the Minister not believe there should be a joined-up approach towards funding, given the contribution not only to the local economy, but also to the preservation of culture and heritage? Um, well, there will be a joined-up approach to this event and other events. I mean, my, my money going through local councils um, is a joined-up event, so that's DECAL and local government providing uh, community festivals funding. Um, if and uh, I mean, the Ulster Scots Agency have come back with a very positive response, saying so there's another joined up event. Um, I'm sure the members are aware of other funding opportunities in which he and others and the organisers can approach. But certainly, I think that there is an example of where a joined up government will actually have an outcome. Call Mr. Cahill Boylan for supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Could I ask the Minister to outline how the Community Festivals Fund? is evaluated? Well, in terms of evaluation, first of all, we rely on 
um, the, the work in which the local government and ourselves are involved in, and certainly through um, the, the department and indeed the Arts Council as well. I mean, there is, there is a, a policy and guidance framework in which the councils uh, work very closely with the, org the event organisers to make sure that they're aware of, of the, the conditions. And this is also clearly laid out in the letter of offer that councils provide. Uh, and they actually provide decal, decal with the evaluation. Um, so it really is, in terms of the evaluation, it is important that festivals from the very, very start consider what they're planned for, ensure that the, the grant and the conditions of their grant have been met through the event, and that should come out very, very clearly in their evaluation, because it is fair to say these small bits of money are normally applied by the same groups every year, so it's in their best interest to come back with a very strong evaluation, and to be fair to most of them do. Well, Mr. Dominic Bradley. Um, can I ask the Minister, uh, is there uh, any stipulation within the uh, Cross Community Fund uh, for events to have a, a Cross Community Nature? Sorry, for the Community Festivals Fund for events to have a Cross Community aspect? Not that I'm aware. Um, I, I, I mean, I know some groups who have, for some time, very naturally been working together across the community. Uh, but I also am aware that there have been single identity work that's that's on that's ongoing. And I think what we need to do is try and encourage uh, mutual work uh, across and between communities as much as possible. Um, but certainly, um, for most of the for most of the councils. Um, most of the councils are very familiar with some of the groups who have said uh, uh, a, pr a previous question. Small bits of money, the same groups have been planned for, for a long time to provide valuable festivals. Um, but I don't think uh, it's really incumbent upon the councils to insist on cross-community work. Because when it's not there and there's no possibility for being there, it's actually off-putting for groups who are trying to do it. Mr. Kieran McCart. Deputy Speaker. The question so far has all been about funding. Um, 36 million for this, 17 million for that, uh, casement at uh, Windsor Park. Will the Minister advise the House that if uh, she and her um, executive colleagues does not get their head out of the sand very shortly, there will be no funding for anything in Northern Ireland, order, let, order, let please, alone the Scarborough the demonstration? Will seat. The Member is long enough here to know that the question should be directed at the question on the sheet. Sorry, is the, is the member questioning the decision of the chair? Continue. Um, well, uh, to be fair to the member, he's normally one of the people jumping up asking for 10 millions for this and 2 millions for that, and that's his job. He's representing the constituency. And, but I won't be taking any lectures from Karen or anybody else on trying to protect those who are most vulnerable. And, um, uh, if the member has a question, a specific question about something as consistency, which may need support, I'm, I'm happy. And the member writes me quite a lot. I'm happy to respond to those. But what I won't do is take any lectures from people who want to go into water charging, prescription charging, take free travel for the elderly. Minister, so I don't think the so. The same rule applies to the minister. Sorry, sorry. Just I call Mr. Up. Alistair Ross. Mr. Deputy Speaker. Thank the member for his question. In relation to Casement Park construction work at Casement Park is currently delayed following a comfort judicial review in December of last year. Since the ruling, the GAA and DECAL and the relevant team members have studied the judgment in order to ensure that any new plan application will fully address and take into account, uh, account the points that were raised by Justice Horner. Uh, there does remain a strong resolve within the Ulster Council of GAA to submit a new plan application, and I would anticipate that a uh, 12-week planning consultation process to support plan application processes will commence in the coming months. In relation to Windsor Park, the Windsor Park is currently under construction, notwithstanding the recent issues regarding the West End, and the project has progressed very well. The project team and the IFA are striving towards delivering the required spectator capacity uh, for the forthcoming uh, Euro 2016 qualifier against Romania on the 13th of June here. Uh, on the, the 20th of April, 
it was agreed that the West Stand um, be demolished and after receiving approval from the IFA's insurer, the old West Stand has now been demolished and the details of the next steps are being developed between the IFA, the insurer and the project team. <coughs> Call Mr Ross for supplementary. Deputy Speaker, would the Minister agree that it's important that we get a stadium the size of Casement Park with that capacity in order for Northern Ireland to bid for major events such as the Rugby World Cup in 2023, but also other events that we would plan to have in the future? And on that basis, is she confident that there will be a planning application submitted at an early stage? And is she confident that that will get approval so that we have a capacity of in around 30,000 that allows us to bid for those sort of major sporting events in the future? Well, um, I, I know that the um, the member uh, will, has certainly pointed out the issues that were raised as part of strategic outline business case in terms of all the stated programmes, three sports going forward together. Uh, we have a fantastic facility at Kingspan Ravenhill, um, which not only is providing great opportunities for people on the field, but also off the field. The same will happen with Windsor Park, uh, and I'm hoping the same will happen with uh, the, case, the redevelopment of Kingspan Park. I would anticipate that the Ulster Council are going to bring forward a planning application in the autumn. Uh, they will use the summer to consult. They will consult widely. They will ensure that the comments that were made by Justice Horner in December of last year are fed into that consultation. But I would agree there needs to be a capacity of at least 30,000, not only to meet the conditions and criteria of the business case, but also to attract other events that were laid out in the business case and also part of the consultation. It would be a, an absolute tragedy if people decided to set their face against something, but they also need to have an opportunity to talk about the difficulties that they have and have had around planning. And I'm hoping that that 12-week consultation process will be an opportunity for people to do that. Well, Mr. Can the Minister provide details on the actions that she has taken to address the uh, safety concerns as raised by the Chair of the STG, the Safety uh, and Technical Group, uh, at the CAL Committee meeting on the 30th of April? Thank the member for his question. He's a member of the CAL Committee and certainly he was, um, he'd be aware that I, I went to the committee. Um, and I'm, I, I want to ensure that safety is paramount, has been and will always be paramount to myself. Um, I have to say that in line with good practice and programme management, and certainly in relation to the allegations that I heard on the 30th of April, I instantly initiated a programme, our project assessment review, which is going to take forward on the stadium programme, which will include specific focus on the issues raised around the Kissing Park project. The review has been commissioned through CPD and will be undertaken by independent experts. Um, and the review, due to uh, emerging potential issues, uh, will ensure that normally a report is published to the department. I will ensure the department therefore <coughs> publishes that publicly so people will see uh, that as much as can be done will be done. I'm reluctant to get into anything else because the other is a whistleblowing um, allegation and it's important that people not only have the confidence to come forward but that uh, the subject uh, isn't subject to public uh, consultation either. Well, Mr. Basil Could the minister advise us uh, what she thinks about the emergency exit plan for casement? Um, I, I think uh, certainly in terms of the members talking about uh, an exit plan for a previous application. The member knows and he's been on the committee and I've heard some of the questions that he's asked and seen some of the questions that he's asked. Uh, the member will know that as part of any new planning application, there will be new plans brought forward. I will ensure, uh, and I'm sure the member and other members of the CAL committee, I will ensure that as part of that consultation process that the CAL committee see any new design, including exit plans and including evacuation plans or anything else, comes with it. Well, Mr. Tom Elliott. Uh, Deputy Speaker, thank you, and I thank the, the Minister for, for the updates. I'm just wondering if the Minister can advise on the liability uh, or who is responsible for the liability of recouping the cost of the repair to Windsor Park and the recently uh, construction problems that there has been in one of the stands. Well, certainly that's something that um, the IFA uh, are working out with the contractor and their insurer, and I. I'm led to believe that this has been done with a county attitude, but certainly I'm very certain that the liability for not only the demolition, but the completion of a new West Stand will not come from the decal 
or indeed the public purse. It will be something that will be sorted out with the IFA, the construction and our insurers. Order. That ends the period for listed questions. We will now move on uh, to 15 minutes of topical questions. And question one has been withdrawn, and I call Mr. Trevor Lunn. Mr. Lunn. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I'm afraid I'm still on the same theme, Minister, about casement. Um, is, is it not, would you agree with me, is it not surprising that given the worldwide expertise and experience now in stadia development and, re and building, that uh, safety considerations should have arisen virtually at the very last minute on a, a relatively small stadium and that also she shouldn't have known about it at an earlier stage? Well, uh, if the members are referring to Caseman Park, I mean, safety considerations are there at the start and the middle at the end. So safety, safety uh, considerations for this, any big capital programme are there, are there throughout. However, what was different was that the level in which the safety concerns were reported um, and certainly the allegation that they were suppressed is something I completely refute. Uh, and I am and I, looking forward to the outcome, not only of the review, but of the investigation to see what lessons that can be learned. On Mr. Lund for a supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Thank the Minister for her answer. Would, would she agree with me, perhaps, in retrospect, that it might have been better to go ahead with a super stadium at the maze <clears throat> and avoid it all this nonsense? Well, the member also is aware that there wasn't political agreement for that. Um, so it's, it's kind of a, a moot question. Um, and I have absolutely no doubt that it's something that's it's in the past. There's nothing we can do about that now. The three governing bodies are getting on with developing their programmes. But let me assure the member that the work and the relationships between those three governing bodies are really, really good. And the, I have no doubt that those relationships will, will endure well beyond the completion of these projects. Call Mr. Stuart Dixon for a topical question. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, Minister, um, can you assure the House today that you will cooperate with the, the Committee of Culture, Arts and Leisure in respect of attending the Committee into their inquiries into the debacle over uh, Caseman Park to date? Not only can I assure the member that I will have already been to the Committee, uh, and I would anticipate being been back again at the Committee, so I would be fully cooperative. I call Mr Ian McCree for a topical question. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Oh, sorry, I think the... Sorry, apologies. I, I, I apologise. We need a supplementary from Mr Dixon. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Minister, uh, thank you for your assurance that, uh, that you will fully cooperate because uh, given the concerns that there are around this project, uh, can you assure the House today that there will be no corners cut in respect of delivery of what is clearly a pet Sinn Féin project for West Belfast? Well, I, I resent that remark. I think, that's, I think that's ridiculous, to be frank, and I'm actually surprised because the members are normally more sensible than that. Um, but certainly I will ensure that safety is paramount in the redevelopment of Caseman Park, as it will be for the other facilities. And I will ensure not only do, that I have went in front of the committee, my officials have went in front of the committee, we will continue to do so work if and when needed. And uh, I think I'll leave it at that. I now call on Mr Ian McCree for a topical question. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. The Minister will be aware that uh, Windsor Park was due to be complete by, um, I think it was the, the latter part of this year, around November time. Given the difficulties that happened around the, the, the stand, has the Minister able to give a, a, a new date for when that work will be completed? Um, I mean, we're currently, as a member, I'll appreciate we're currently working that out, but I don't anticipate a very, very big delay. I mean, the completion is due by you're right, it was November of this year. Um, I'd imagine the delay will be just a few months rather than longer than that because, to be fair to the IFA, they have a great team there. They're working very, very closely with the department and they're working very well. They have a very good working relationship with their contractors, which doesn't always be the case with other capital bills. So I anticipate the delay will be certainly a matter of a few months rather than several months. Mr McCree for supplementary. Um, they not only have a great wee team working on it, they have a great wee team that, that plays in the park. And can I um, 
congratulate, and maybe the Minister will join with me in congratulating the young Cookstown lad, Stuart Dallas, who scored his first international goal last night alongside Cookstown's um, Aaron Hughes, who is now the most capped outfield player. But given the fact that there is a European Championship match in, um, I think it's the 13th of June, can the Minister um, give any detail of whether there will be the temporary arrangements that they hope to have in place, whether they will still be in place for that match? Well, for, firstly, I would like to join with the member congratulating his constituents as he manages to weave in, but this is what topical questions are about, but certainly congratulating young Stuart uh, on his appearance. I am actually working through the processes with the IFA at the minute for the 13th of June. Everything that I have heard thus far has been in the right direction, very encouraging, very positive. They are working through the procedures and the protocols to do what they need to do in order to, to not only have the, the, the main, the, as much capacity there as possible, but they have done it in the backdrop of a lot of challenges, particularly around the cap stand. So happy uh, with the developments thus far and certainly content that everything is going in the right direction to ensure that maximum capacities are to help meet the rules. I'll miss Anna Lou for a topical question. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister for an update on the cross community sports programme under the Together Building a United Community Strategy? Thank the member for a question. And the members raised this certainly in terms of community relations before. The programme is developing, developing very well. I mean, they call are a number of departments. Uh, working towards the overarching strategy of the TBOC. Um, I mean, the pilot scheme that we had in the village area, um, at the greater village area, and certainly the, the falls, the Gravener area, has worked very, very well. I mean, I knew that even before I got the results of the evaluation. And certainly at the minute, we're talking to colleagues in FMDFM about not only rolling it out in deprived areas across, but also looking at rural communities as well. So I'm, I'm very happy with the direction it's going in. Ms. Lowe for supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I'm pleased to hear that there's been progressing well. Uh, does the Minister uh, intend to evaluate the whole process and produce an evaluation report? Well, as I said, uh, the, the first programme was a pilot scheme, um, and the evaluation of that was yes, it was very successful, yes, there is a need for it, and there is a need of more for it. And certainly some of the tweaks in the programme actually came from the young people, the participants, which is really, really good. If anything, lessons that we learn, we need to bring the young people, the participants, into the design, incorporate them into, into the design of the next programme, and that's currently happening at the minute. Uh, I've, I've absolutely no doubt that once the overall programme of TBOC is finished, that FMDFM will ask each of the departments to provide contributions to an overall evaluation report. Mr. Gordon Dunn for a topic of question. Mr. Speaker, further to the recent evidence given to the decal committee by Mr. Paul Scott, can the minister advise the House of when she, as decal minister, became aware of the concerns of emergency exiting at Casement Park? Well, um, the member will know because he's on the decal committee, and he was there on the 23rd when my officials went to the committee. He was there on the 30th when Mr. Paul Scott uh, made allegations at the committee as well. Uh, and as I said to him when I was there, so perhaps he doesn't understand that when I said I wasn't aware of the seriousness of the allegations that Mr. Paul Scott made until I heard him when he gave evidence to the committee on the 30th of April. And from then, I've initiated two very robust processes, which his colleagues in DFP are currently subject to that investigation and that review certainly the review anyway, and not, not just them, but also the British West, Westminster Cabinet Office are also involved in some investigations. I call Mr Dunn for supplementary. Thanks, Mr Deputy Speaker, and thank the Minister. Will the Minister today give us an assurance that any new design proposals for Casement Park will deal with the, the emergency exiting issue and will not bury them as they did in the past? I'm just wondering the coincidence of his and Basil's question, and maybe he's reading out from the same script. But certainly, but certainly, let me give the member the same assurance I give to Basil McRae and to anybody else listening. I will ensure that safety is paramount. I have done. I will continue to do that. Any new plans that will be submitted as part of a new planning application will be there, subject to 12 weeks of consultation at least. I would anticipate that the decal committee 
or the CAL committee, which member is a member of, will not only see those plans, will have a, 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 an opportunity to contribute to that consultation. And I'm sure he will look out for exiting, egress, access, and indeed any other aspect of concern. And I'm absolutely delighted to see so many people supportive of the redevelopment of Casement Park. Mr. Fergal McKinney for a topical question. Thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, I don't know quite how we've reached here, but uh, or this new depressing level, but it appears that we're about to start politicising musical instruments and music, um, uh, uh, which of course should be about harmony. Um, I wonder could the Minister give her assessment of the importance of music, musical instruments and tuition, particularly for children, and to, could you outline all action that you've taken or could take uh, to resource a strategy to maximise uptake? Well, I, I'm not sure what the member was referring to at the start of his contribution, but I have not made, I, I have not made uh, a political at all and I would absolutely resist anybody attempting to either. As I understand the member to be come from the same position. I, I have to say though that I have met certainly some time ago now the, mar the Marching Bands Forum and that is one aspect of musical instruments tuition. There are others. I mean, I've met people from Coltis. I have met people from the All Iron Fla Committee, certainly the ones in Derry and so on and so forth. Went the Ulster Fla and all the rest. Also met children and young people who are involved in jazz and contemporary music, and the importance of music to them is important to me. Music is my thing. That, that is something that I fully appreciate and participate in, and I do see the importance of it. And it is important that, where possible, in these financial circumstances, we invest in opportunities for children and young people to get involved in music. Mr. McKinney, for supplement. Mr. Deputy Speaker, can I thank the Minister for her response? And in the context of her latter remarks, would she undertake to uh, liaise with her colleague, the Education Minister, in an attempt to really maximise the availability uh, of musical tuition and music for all of our children? Um, absolutely. Um, John O'Dowd and I, not only were sitting next to each other, but our offices are so close together as well. We have done and will continue to do so. Uh, and it's important that schools, and I have spoke to many principals and indeed boards of governors about this, not only in relation to music, but also in relation to art and physical activity in school. It's important that within the budgets that the schools currently have, that they ensure that these subjects aren't uh, an afterthought, but are built right into the middle of the criteria. Uh, Mr. William Irwin is not in his place. I call him Mr. Thomas Buchanan. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I'm sure the Minister will be aware of the important part that Anglin plays uh, to especially tourism within West Tyrone. Can she advise uh, what engagement she or her department has had with the Anglin clubs to help further their sport? Well, certainly um, it's a valuable asset, not just in West Tyrone, which obviously has some beautiful scenery, but it's, a, it's an asset right across this island. In fact, Anglin clubs irrespective, have worked very, very closely together for years and will continue to. And Anglin is very, very important, not just for community uh, participation, uh, but it's something that's intergenerational and it does actually help increase tourism, particularly along, along uh, some of the waterways, uh, which actually have a very good yield in terms of trout. Um, but I am and have been very supportive of local Anglin clubs uh, and will continue to be so. Well, Mr. Buchanan for supplementary. Can, can the Minister give an undertaking that she will meet with the Anglican clubs in West Tyrone to help iron out any of the difficulties that they may have? Well, um, certainly, and I have met with many Anglican clubs, and will, I'm sure will continue to. And if the member has certainly Anglican clubs in his own constituency that he wants me to have a, have a meeting with him, I'm happy to do that. You can just find the office and we'll get that sorted. It's absolutely no bother whatsoever. Call Mr. Martin Mulyer for a topical question. Uh, can I ask the Minister to give her an assessment of the contribution of Carried Off GAC to both sport and community in South Belfast? Um, well, happy to recognise the contribution of um, Carried Off, and certainly I know that it's, it's a, a big club, but like many clubs across sport and physical activity, the work that they particularly do, again, across generations. It's actually keeping people well, it's keeping them fit, and it's keeping them safe. Well, Mr. Mulyer, for supplementary. Uh, thank you, Tantamo Gary Gurridge. Uh, thank you for squeezing uh, the last supplementary in. 
uh, Deputy Speaker. Uh, could I ask the Minister, would you give a commitment to visit the club and to see the good work that's going on there uh, with over 1,000 members, uh, the biggest club in Ulster, but sadly a club which doesn't get the resources which it's entitled to? Absolutely happy to visit Carried Off uh, for myself. Time is up.